miss you already. Ow! Trolls tend to have many talents, from singing and dancing to scrapbooking and strategizing. But between them and their many enemies, which ones reach the genius rank and which ones are dumber than a pile of glitter? This is Trolls characters, dumb to brilliant. Spoilers ahead for all three Trolls films from DreamWorks. As always, we'll be starting with our most brainless characters before working our way up to the true smarties of the bunch. We should also mention that while we won't be able to talk about every Trolls character, we'll try to hit as many of the main and most notable ones as possible. Starting off our list, we unfortunately have to put King Gristle Jr. at the bottom of our list. Though for what it's worth, he's not completely brainless, as it's primarily his lack of experience that makes him come off as a bit thoughtless at times. Having inherited the crown at a young age, Gristle doesn't know much about the world beyond Bergentown. Additionally, because he's still relatively young, it's often easy for him to be manipulated. First by his father, who claimed that he would never be happy if he didn't eat a troll, despite Gristle Jr. already being a pretty happy child, and then by Chef. Gristle was also shown as being fairly reckless in the first film, only vowing to put trolls back on the menu in order to earn the favor of his subjects. Well, we'll see who's laughing when I bite your yummy head off. We don't really see Gristle do that much actual ruling either compared to the other royals in the Trolls franchise, almost making him come off as more of a figurehead than anything else. And as we saw in the latest Trolls film, he's more than willing to let Bridget take the lead when it comes to things like their honeymoon or an impromptu rescue mission. From one royal to another, let's talk about Cooper next. Being the only funk troll in Poppy and Branch's friend group, Cooper tends to stand out, both because of his great height and because of his almost constant goofy grin. While this leads to him being pretty funny and enthusiastic, he doesn't tend to be very smart and often just defaults to being extremely silly. Cooper is also known for being pretty ditzy and airheaded, to the point where he often misses danger even when it's right in front of him. It's almost as though being so tall forces his head to always be in the clouds. The craziest party ever! All that being said, he managed to be a pretty talented dancer and harmonica player, so that counts for something. Cooper is also shown in the second film to be somewhat insightful when it comes to being a troll, raised by two different music styles, as well as very in tune with his instincts. He's the first one to hear and feel his heartbeat after Poppy destroys the magic strings, using this to create his own music, and encourage the other trolls around them to regain their morale. So hey, maybe this guy isn't too ditzy after all. Switching back over to the Bergens, Bridget is coincidentally just a bit above her husband in terms of intelligence. Essentially a Bergen Cinderella story, Bridget went from being a maid to a queen after falling in love with Gristle Jr. But this love story wasn't one that she could accomplish on her own, as she needed quite a bit of help from the trolls specifically from Branch, who told her what to say to win Gristle's affections. However, this was more due to Bridget's lack of confidence than any lack in dating skills. As a former maid, she's also skilled at cleaning, and when it comes to things like motorcycles or roller skates, that's where Bridget's skills truly shine. We'd also say that she's a bit more insightful than Gristle as well, as we see in the first Trolls holiday special, when she's the first to fully realize why the concept of sharing holidays was so important to Poppy. All in all, while she may still be on the side of average, it's no wonder that Bridget was also still able to stand out among the other Bergens. Reaching our first true villain of the lot, next is Veneer. Being one half of the third movie's villainous duo, Veneer may be seen as the somewhat nice one, but he unfortunately lacks a bit when it comes to intelligence. He's very much a follower when it comes to his and Velvet's schemes. And during his interview, he had a hard time lying and playing it cool when it came to the topic of their so-called talents. Still, if there's anything we can give Veneer credit for, it's that he seems to have just a bit more common sense than Velvet. Whether it's because he was actually willing to think ahead or simply because he wasn't blinded by greed, he still frequently pointed out to Velvet that using too much of Floyd's talent too quickly would leave them with nothing and that they couldn't be wasteful with it. This combined with his willingness to eventually confess to his crimes, instead of potentially making things worse by trying to hide them, earns him a decent rating, even if he still has his occasional moments of not being too bright. It certainly takes a cool head and a fairly wise mind to be in any sort of leadership position, and King Pepe actually manages to have both. While on the surface he may just seem like another goofy king, there was a reason why Pepe was so respected by his fellow trolls. After all, he was able to save most of his people during the events of the last troll stice. No troll left behind! 
He's also said to be quick with inspirational words of wisdom and is happy to give advice, although these words can sometimes be just a bit eccentric. He has also become just a bit forgetful as he's aged, to the point of sometimes losing things in his hair. You also have to wonder a bit about just how willing he is to keep secrets, such as with the existence of other troll tribes, and even his own thought-to-be lost daughter, Viva, thus leaving Poppy completely in the dark about these things despite now being queen. Not exactly the wisest decision, if you ask us. Mixing things up a bit, we'd like to now talk about the three of the brothers of Brozone, these being John Dory, Floyd, and Spruce. Don't worry. We'll talk about the other two in a bit. But for most of this brotherly band, we'd say they all hover around the same level of intelligence, hence why they share the same ranking spot. After their family band broke up, each of these three brothers was able to make a life for themselves and live independently. With John Dory, we saw that he became a bit of an adventurer, having plenty of gear and weapons, while also knowing how to use them in order to survive on his own. He was also the main songwriter of the band, having a decent amount of musical skills. Spruce, meanwhile, was able to start a successful beachside business with his wife Brandy, proving that he had his own leadership skills and wasn't just a handsome face. As for Floyd, while he may spend most of the film being a dude in distress, he at the very least came up with a nearly successful escape attempt when he played dead in his diamond prison. Additionally, Floyd seems very emotionally intelligent, being able to see Veneer's issues with his sibling clearly and being able to form somewhat of a connection with him, making it easier to earn some of Veneer's sympathy. While they aren't the smartest members of Brozone, we'd say that these three each have their own impressive moments or successes that show off their hidden brain power. Really, the only instance of any of them being truly dumb was when John Dory apparently didn't see anything suspicious about a parking space marked specifically for Brozone, leading to the rest of them getting captured. This could have been more of a case of pride than sheer dumbness, but it still deserves a mention. Survival is sometimes the name of the game in this wacky yet dangerous trolls world, and as much as we want to hate him, Creek is definitely a survivalist. While he may carry an air of being zen, allowing him to be the most positive and reassuring troll in the whole village, a little positivity might go with that vest. In actuality, he's a huge coward. But hey, cowards can still be crafty. As we see when he ends up making a deal with Chef to save his own skin, the two of them coming up with a plan to trick and capture the remaining trolls. Beyond this, Creek is also a yoga master, and while this may not be the hardest skill to master per se, it's still notable given that he was one of the few trolls in the village to be a teacher of sorts. But in some instances, you don't need mastery or even a ton of experience to still be considered fair smart, as we see with Tiny Diamond. Admittedly, this ranking is more based on perspective than anything else. You have to remember that Tiny Diamond is the youngest member of the Trolls cast by a wide margin, only being a few months old. Peace and love. Bless up, Tiny and Daddy. Ow! But even at this incredibly young age, he's shown being able to drive, fight, and rap without much difficulty at all. Heck, in one of the Trollstopia shorts, Bubbled In, Tiny was taught how to play troll chess and ended up excelling at the game despite only just learning how to play. We can't say for sure if Tiny is a genius, but he's certainly on his way to being a prodigy. We should also mention that while Tiny Diamond has a pretty huge ego, he, like his father, Guy Diamond, is actually self-aware of it. So even when he's doing things like trying to prove he's grown up, he almost never needs to be taught an actual moral or lesson as it's likely he already knows it deep down. With him, it's just a matter of being patient. If we really want to get into the more niche skills, though, we simply have to talk about Satin and Chenille, the fashionista twins. Sure, they may not be the deepest characters in the franchise, often just being used for your typical arguing twins jokes, but it can't be denied that they truly do have an eye for fashion that outmatches any other trolls. Their fashion knowledge is incredibly extensive, covering everything from haute couture runways to the latest street fashions. Combining this knowledge with their sewing and crafting skills, the two are able to create some stunning outfits in very short amounts of time. Really, the only time their skills faltered somewhat was when they made disguises to try and blend in with the rock tribe in Trolls World Tour, with their outfits having more of a general rock and roll aesthetic instead of the tribe's hard rock aesthetic. But even with this bit of failure on their record, it still doesn't take too much away from the talent that these twins have. But while the twins may be more book smart when it comes to fashion, Viva takes after the rest of her family in being a resourceful survivor. While she's a bit hyperactive, 
active, even to the point of being a bit too much for Poppy at times. Viva is almost never distracted when it comes to the safety of herself and her people. She was able to lead herself and the other trapped trolls to safety away from the Bergens, in spite of only being a child at the time. Once she and the others found the abandoned putt-putt course, Viva, with the help of Clay, was able to turn it into an incredibly secure troll sanctuary, often leading the combat and defense side of things. Also, let's be real here. Her almost instantaneous hair braiding skills are also really impressive. It just goes to show that you can take the would-be queen out of the village, but you can't take the queen out of the troll. And speaking of queens, Queen Barb is next on our list. Although Barb is a very emotional character, being driven by anger and revenge towards the pop troll tribe, she actually doesn't fall into the trap of being too reckless very often. When it came to her hard rock apocalypse, Barb was shown being both strategic and efficient during each of her takeovers with the other troll tribes, being able to collect all the strings she needed for the ultimate power cord with relative ease. I can make us all one nation of trolls under rock. Though obviously a brawler at heart, Barb is able to be strategic when she needs to be and was even able to call in help through using bounty hunters. She's a pretty decent fighter and is highly skilled at driving her beetle bike. She's also shown having a more realistic approach to things such as friendship and the differences between the tribes, even if she still has her own biases. We also can't forget her totally rockin' guitar playing skills, making her one of the most musically talented characters in the bunch. Really, her only instance of being dumb came from her overconfidence following her successful capture of the six strings. If not for her deciding to give her guitar to Poppy after Poppy seemingly became a rock zombie, Barb might have won. Entering our top five brainiest characters, we've come to the last of our queens, Poppy. While she may be pure optimism at times, Poppy is far from naive or helpless. If anything, she quickly proves herself to be more resourceful and cunning than we're sure anyone would have initially thought. She works together incredibly well with others, especially Branch, and she can also be observant, getting the idea from Hickory to give herself gumdrop earplugs in order to avoid getting turned into a rock zombie. She learned that from watching me. Faking it until she got her hands on Barb's guitar. All this to say, Poppy still admittedly has her moments where she doesn't think ahead. As we said at the start, optimism is the biggest thing that drives her, to the point where she'll sometimes focus only on her own goals without fully considering the potential consequences of her decisions. Even so, when she does finally slow down and think things through, fully listening to the advice of others as well as her own heart, her true skills as a leader and friend can't be denied, as her greatest skill is being able to genuinely learn from her mistakes. The same, however, can't be said for Velvet, the fake pop princess of Mount Rages. While she may have only been a teenager, you can't deny that Velvet's initial plan of stealing talent from trolls who could actually sing was incredibly successful. It's unclear just how long she and Veneer were using Floyd, but it was long enough to give them tons of fame, money, and fans, turning them into megastars. In her desperation to keep the scheme going, Velvet also proves to be fairly strategic. While she can't invent the tech herself, she tricks her assistant Crimp into building her a device that would allow her to secretly get extra boost of troll talent during a performance. She also tricked Brozone into coming to Mount Rages, pretty much capturing them single-handedly through the previously mentioned parking spot trap. Not the most clever trap, admittedly, but hey, it worked. But while Velvet can be incredibly cunning and has proven several times over that her plans are typically successful ones, we aren't able to put her any higher as she lacks her brother's common sense, focusing more on instant gratification than the long term and foolishly choosing to push Floyd to the limits for the sake of her own greed. Even if Brozone hadn't fought back, we feel like these poor spur-of-the-moment decisions would have caught up to her eventually, overshadowing any cleverness she might have still had. Taking the bronze medal of braininess is the former fun one of Brozone, Clay. Wanting to be more than just the guy people turn to for having fun and pulling pranks, Clay became completely serious, or about as serious as a troll could be. While some of this was only surface level, such as joining a sad book club, other parts spoke to his hidden intelligence and maturity. This included actually training and eventually becoming a certified CPA, something that naturally takes plenty of financial skills and knowledge about financials to accomplish. He even puts this title to good use at the end of the film, when he calls Velvet and Veneer out for their tax evasion, resulting in the repossession of their yacht. 
As Viva's right-hand man, he also used his skills to keep their putt-putt kingdom running smoothly through his managing and more grounded nature in comparison to Viva. It's also implied through quick bits of dialogue that, back when Brozone was still a thing, he was the one putting together their choreography. With all these skills to his name, whoever said that being serious instead of fun was a bad thing? From financials and managing to cooking and attempted usurping, our silver medal of braininess has to go to Chef Bergen. Though sometimes impatient and gruff, there's way more to Chef than meets the eye as she proved to be one of the troll's most dangerous villains, and not just because of her size. The main way Chef showed her intelligence was through being manipulative and being able to convince King Gristle and the other Bergens that they could only be happy if they ate a troll, giving herself both a job as well as a way to get back into power 20 years later when she finally found more trolls. Enjoy a taste of true happiness. Even with her reputation previously being ruined, she was able to put on an act of atonement and simply wanting to make her people happy again to get back in the Bergen's good graces, once again being able to keep her lies regarding trolls going. Her craftiness also extends to being able to think on her feet, allowing her to keep her plans going even when obstacles or opposition pops up, such as when she decided to use Creek's help when he offered, instead of simply dismissing him. While she was able to be fooled a couple of times, such as with the troll's wooden replicas or by Bridget's Lady Glitter Sparkles disguise, these were rare instances. Add in her legitimate talents for cooking, stated to be unmatched by any other Bergen, and you've got yourself a villain with both brawn and brains. Finally, our gold medal of braininess goes to Branch. He may not be the happiest troll around, and his cynicism can sometimes make it hard for him to trust in others. But when it comes to pure intelligence, we truly think that Branch just can't be beat. Of all our survivalist characters, Branch is proven to be the most skilled as well as the most resourceful. Well, who's crazy now? Me. After the death of his grandmother, Branch had to rely on himself. Through his own skills and determination, he was able to not only build his own incredibly impressive bunker, but also gather enough supplies that, according to him, would last him at least 10 years, possibly longer. And hey, that's not even getting into all his traps that he also built all on his own, proving that he's an incredibly talented craftsman. When it came to putting his survivalist skills to the test, Branch proved to be both a decent fighter as well, able to defend himself and Poppy from other creatures. Speaking of which, he's pretty knowledgeable regarding plenty of different fauna and flora, knowing how to use them for survival as well as the possible danger. Even while being forced to improvise, Branch is able to often rely on his abilities, instincts, and quick thinking to keep himself and others safe. Thanks to his time in Brozone, Branch is also musically gifted as both a singer and a dancer, even writing his own songs. While we can acknowledge that there's certainly more to intelligence than just book smarts, Branch's healthy mix of nature and defense knowledge, his many talents, and his healthy amounts of common sense and realistic thinking easily make him the smartest troll around. 